Want to learn your target language for free? Then get our language gifts of the month right now, before they expire. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the going to the movies conversation cheat sheet. With this new cheat sheet, you'll learn to say phrases like, does this have subtitles? When does the movie start? And much more. Second, the how to talk about your feelings PDF ebook. You'll learn over 90 words and phrases for feelings with this bonus PDF picture ebook. Download and review it on any device. Third, 30 must know opposite adjectives. Learn how to say young and old, hot and cold, and much more. You'll pick up over 30 words with this vocab bonus. Fourth, can you talk about people's appearances? With this quick one minute lesson, you'll learn to describe others with words like tall, short, muscular, and much more. Fifth, want the language learning app that actually gets you speaking? Download Innovative Language 101 for free for the Android, iPhone, and iPad. You'll unlock hundreds of bite-sized audio and video lessons made by real teachers and start speaking in minutes. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get up to 45% off our six month challenge sale. To get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Hey you guys, merhaba, hoş geldiniz. Welcome to Turkish Class 101.com. Ben Seda. Nasılsınız? İyi misiniz? Ben çok iyiyim. So, are you guys ready for our topic for today? Ready? I sure am. Our to topic today, today we'll talk about top 10 popular songs in Turkey. Before we start, I have to tell you that I don't have a good singing voice, but that doesn't suggest that I can keep myself from singing songs. So, be warned about my singing. So, don't comment bad things about my singing, I know. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Ready? You should know before we start. I say let's start, then I say something. You should know that there are a lot of Turkish songs with different styles, folk, rap, pop, rock, and so on. And the most popular ones are debatable, actually. I try to choose different kinds of songs from different eras, so to be in the middle ground or something like that. And if you are ready, we can now start. Start. First is Fikret, Kızılok, Bukalp, Seni. Unutur mu? Bu kalp seni unutur mu? Bu kalp seni unutur mu? Means that would this heart forget you? Fikret Kızılok was an Anatolian rock singer. I think he passed away around 2001 and he was very famous. And this song is very calm and still very popular. Especially for the people who are learning, just learning how to play guitar since the melody of this song is very simple, okay? The next one is Sertap Erener, Aşk. Aşk means love, and Sertap Erener is one of the finest voices among Turkish female singers. She created a lot of albums and hit songs, and she attended Eurovision Song Contest in, I think, 2003, and won the contest with the song name Every Way That I Can. Na, na, na, na, na, na, na. I don't remember the rest. Ash is one of her most loved songs, but she has many, many, many more. You should check. Okay, the next one is Sezan Aksu, Küçü. Küçü means I'm little. The lyrics go on something like this. Küçüğüm daha çok, küçüğüm bu yüzden bütün hatalarım... I'm very little, so very little, that's why all of my mistakes and it goes on like that. I can probably say this, Sezen Aksu is the most popular female singer so far uh, and she's not just a singer but a songwriter. She helped a lot of people in their music careers as well, including Sarkar I just mentioned you before 
as an accent. So, the next one is tarkan, shumaruk. Shumaruk means spoiled, and maybe you know tarkan. Uh, Tarkan is one of the best pop singers in Turkey and with the song Shumarık he became popular worldwide and he had a lot of fans for so so so many years but he lost his popularity in time I don't know what he's doing now and the next one is Mor ve Ötesi Bir Derdim Var the song name is Bir Derdim Var Mor ve Ötesi is actually a band Turkish alternative rock band. More ve ötesi means purple and beyond. Do you think do you are beyond? <laughs> and bir derdim var means I have a problem. And this band is very popular among uh, young people. And this song is loved very much. And more ve ötesi also attended Eurovision Song Contest. I think they finished and seventh place or something, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, I think it was seventh. And the next one is Barış Malço Nane Limon Kabu. Nane Limon Kabu means me and lemon peel. Nane Limon Kabu, bir tutam zence filama, ha ha ha ha ha içine, neydi? Hat mi çiçeği? Biraz çörek otu katasını ma ha ha ha ha ha ha ha <laughs> It's a funny song about how to treat yourself with herbs if you get sick. <laughs> Barış Manço died many years ago, but he is in the hearts of Turkish people forever. I think I can say this, everybody likes him. So if you want to know about Turkish culture, you need to get to know Barış Mancho, check out on YouTube. Right, Barış Mancho. <laughs> so, the next one is again a group called MFÖ. The group name is the capital letters of the members Mashar, Fuat, Özkan, aka MFÖ. And the song is Güllerin İçinden, Through the Roses. Uh, it's an iconic, so iconic song and I believe everyone knows Knows the song by heart. <laughs> the next one is Haluk Levent, Akdeniz Akşamları. Haluk Levent has a popish rock style and he has been singing for a long time. And Akdeniz Akşamları is his hit song. It means Mediterranean nights. Every young person who plays the guitar at the beach plays this song. It's a total cliche. So go ahead and listen to it. So you'll be part of the gang, you know. Akdeniz akşamları, it's like Akdeniz akşamları. Ra, ra, ra. <laughs> anyway, here comes Aşık Beysel. Uzun ince bir yoldayım. Okay, this is different. Aşık Veysel was what we call Aşık, a folk poet. So I wouldn't call him a singer. He was more than that. And he used to play balama, a string musical instrument. And uzun ince bir yoldayım is translated as I'm on a long and a narrow road journey. It's a metaphor for life. And, you know, Ayşe Faisal is such a huge part of our culture. So, the last one. Ayten Altman. Bir başkadır benim memleketim. The singer is not well known, known nowadays. She passed away around 2002, I think. But her song, Bir başkadır benim memleketim, is a song about Turkey. And it's kind of an emotional song about this country, which is why it's loved so much for so many years. It's like havasına, suyuna, taşına, toprağına, la la la la la la. It goes on like that. It's about, you know, saying good things about our country. But it's not a military song, more emotional. It's like that. Okay, so that's it guys. Of course, there are a lot more than that I didn't mention, but you go and check out the ones I mentioned and discover the rest 
by yourself. You are all alone to discover the rest. I'm sure there are a lot of sources that you can find. And please leave some comments about which songs you liked and why. And if you have, you know, ones that you don't like, tell me. Anyway, I will see you next time. Okay. Okay. I promise I stop singing. I won't, see, I won't be singing anymore. I'm going. Görüşürüz. <laughs> Bye. Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at TurkishClass101.com. Hey guys! Hey, merhaba! Seda here again. Ben Seda. Nasılsınız? Her şey yolunda mı? Ben çok iyiyim. Are you guys ready for today's topic? We have a fun topic. We will talk about top 10 popular TV shows in Turkey. I have a confession to make. I don't watch regular TV. I have Netflix and I enjoy watching uh, shows there. So I have to search a little to see what is being watched most nowadays. So <laughs> let's start with the shows first, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? Do, do, do. <laughs> There is a famous TV producer named Ajun Ulujalı. And over the years, he produced a lot of shows that were hit in Turkey. And most of them were global shows made local. And two of them are very popular right now. One is just finished and the other is just started. Uh, another season. They have seasons also. Uh, the first one is MasterChef. I think this is also a global show. It's a cooking contest. There's not much that I can tell you about it. The other one is Survivor. People are going crazy with this show. There are teams and they are uh, racing each other with a lot of physical games and different challenges. And this show is on a nice tropical island. I don't remember which one. And everyone enjoys watching it. Okay, let's continue with the third. The next two ones are a new series. Uh, there's a psychologist, real psychologist, uh, named Gülseren Budayıcıoğlu and these two series are created from her books. These books are based on real sessions she had with her patients. And the books got turned into series and now they are very popular. So the first one is Masumlar Apartmanı. Uh, you can translate it as Apartment of uh, the... Uh, Innocence, Apartments of Innocence. In Turkey, it's very popular right now. It's a dysfunctional family with cleaning obsessive siblings, living together and having all sorts of trauma. And the other one is again uh, from the same author, Kırmızı uh, which means Red Room. And that show is about a psychiatrist and her patients. And in every week is about another uh, session of trauma. So with all these trauma cases, uh, these two psychology series are very, very, very popular right now. Okay, that was four. Let's continue with the next one. The next one is a comedy show called Çok Güzel Hareketler. Uh, you can translate it, very nice gestures. Uh, this is a different kind of show. It's actually a theater. Yılmaz Erdoğan, a famous actor, he has his own uh, theater company called BKM, Beşiktaş Kültür Merkezi. And he's educating young actors there. And these young actors write and play their own sketches every week. And it is recorded and broadcasted every week on television. And Neil Mazardon watches them and he comments on their sketches, you know, how they played, how they wrote the sketches and so on. It's fun to watch. Okay, the next one is something kind of weird. Müge Anlı ile Tatlı Sert, Peter Sweet uh, with Müge Anlı. Uh, it's a morning show that mostly, you know, housewives watch, but it's kind of a popular show. This woman named Müge Anlı, uh, the narrator, finds weird criminal cases and she acts like a judge who tries to figure out who murdered or kidnapped whom and so on. 
The people who participate in the show are generally from uneducated, uh, more conservative, low-income neighborhoods, and the cases are so, so weird and mind-blowing, you wouldn't believe. I don't understand why, but lots of people love this show, so. Okay, <clears throat> let's see what is next. The next two are Netflix Turkey productions. Uh, the first one is Bir Başkadır, known as Ethos in English, another exact translation though. Uh, there is a new show, uh, this is a new show mini series actually, maybe five, six episodes. It's about individuals transcend their social cultural boundaries and find some kind of connection between their own story and, you know, as their lives intertwine. So it's a fine show. And the other one is Atie, known as The Gift in English. And Atiye is a young painter artist who lives in Istanbul and draws some kind of symbol for all her life. And she sees that symbol in Göbekli Tepe ruins and the ruins are just discovered and she draws the same symbol for years. So it's weird for her and she starts going after this mystery. After this discovery, some kind of Indiana Jones adventures start. So. That's it for the Atier. Uh, you should watch the rest, otherwise I will give some spoilers. <laughs> the next two is about Ottoman Empire. One is new and the other is an older show. Uh, the first one is Kurtuluş Ertuğrul, something like a founder Ertuğrul. And this is about Ertuğrul Gazi, the founder of the Ottoman Empire and about those times that he was establishing a new state. And the next one is Muhteşem Yüzyıl, the magnificent century, you would say. And this is about Kanuni Sultan Süleyman, the Süleyman the Magnificent and his era. And these are historical series, but keep in mind that they are fictional. Now, sometimes people think that the history was just like how it was in the show. Uh, it's fictional, meaning not everything happened in the show, happened in real life, just like that. And in Turkey, these kind of, you know, historical shows are generally a bit politic. I mean, whomever, whomever has the power affects the outcome of these shows. So they are both a little politic and fictional but yet loved very much. So that's it guys. I'm done with the shows. Have you seen any of them? Did you like them? Hmm? Did you like them? Did you? I think the Suleiman, the uh, special foreigners love it a lot. What do you think? Leave some comments. Okay. And don't forget that we have a lot of shows. We have a lot of movies, you know, these kind of morning shows, uh, late night contests, you know, series, a lot of it. But, you know, I try to put together 10 most low ones. So you have to search for the rest yourself. Sorry. <laughs> okay, leave some comments below. I will see you next time. Görüşmek üzere. Bye. Hey everyone, welcome to The Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. Where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is... The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. If you have trouble sticking with your language learning goals, it's probably because you're skipping one specific step. It's the step you need to take before you even start any learning. And doing it will help you stick with the language, not get overwhelmed and reach your language goals. So today you'll learn, one, what solo language learners need to succeed, and two, how to do self-assessment and set yourself up for success. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. 
Be sure to download these now before we take them down in a few days. First, the Giving Directions Conversation Cheat Sheet. Do you know how to tell a taxi driver where to go in your target language? You'll be able to. With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll learn must-know words and phrases for giving directions. Second, the Most Common Verbs PDF eBook. You'll learn over 90 common verbs with this bonus PDF picture eBook. Download and review on any device. Third, how to talk about what you do in your free time. Learn how to say video games, fishing, and much more. You'll pick up over 25 words for leisure activities with this vocab bonus. Fourth, how to learn from home, learning strategies. Want to learn the language from the comfort of your home? This one minute lesson will give you all the best tactics for learning languages. Fifth, the top 35 adjectives for personalities. Can you describe your personality? This next bonus teaches you the 35 must know adjectives for personalities, so you can talk about yourself in your target language. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. The first step in your language learning journey that will guarantee your success. Here's a question for you. When you want to learn a language, how do you usually get started with that goal? You might say the inspiration comes first and that motivates you to start. Then you get a textbook or an app and go from there, right? That's a pretty standard answer, but how does that tend to work out? Most people end up falling off a week or a month later. Why do you think that happens? Leave a comment with why you think people tend to lose inspiration quickly. More often than not, it happens because you pick a goal, a learning routine, or a resource that overwhelms you and just isn't right for you. Here's a typical example. Let's say you work an eight hour day and you wanna to try to start learning. Most people would try to squeeze in learning for one or two hours at night, or you could try and wake up an hour early. And usually that doesn't work out because you're trying to do things that you're not used to. Wake up earlier and study earlier. It doesn't fit your current lifestyle. So what should you do differently? Well, let's take an example from language schools. Before you start learning, language schools force you to take an assessment test on the first day. Why? So that they make sure the language lessons fit your level and put you in the proper class. The goal of an assessment test is to find out where you are and meet you there. That's something most solo learners don't do. And the problem is if you're a solo learner, no one assesses you and you yourself don't know what routine works best for you, how much time you can set aside and how much studying you can comfortably do. We all imagine we can do an hour a day, but realistically speaking, it'll be a lot less than that. So that's where self-assessment comes in. Before you start learning a language or do any goal for that matter, it's important to know where you are in life, what your daily schedule is like, when you're busy and when you're free. So you can set your expectations, know how much time you can put in, and so you can start learning at a pace that works for you. Now, how do you actually assess yourself? There are three assessments you can do. One, a life assessment. Two, a routine assessment. And three, language assessment. Language assessment will only be helpful if you already have some experience. If you're brand new, you won't need this. First, life assessment. Here, the goal is to see how the language will fit into your life and how you generally deal with goals. As in, if you succeeded with a goal before, what helped you succeed? You could take that and apply it here. If you failed before, find out why so you can avoid it this time. So you'll need to answer the following questions. Why are you learning this language? How will it help your life? What current connections do you have to this language? For example, listening to music, watching TV, you have a relative, you have neighbors or friends that speak it. What have you been doing so far to learn? Have you learned languages before? Have you failed any goals before? How or why? Have you succeeded with any goals before? How or why? Write these questions out and answer them. Next, the routine assessment. Write out your daily routine for a whole week. For example, wake up at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8 a.m., commute to work at 8.30 a.m., arrive at work at 9.30 a.m., lunch at 1 p.m., and so on. Do this for every day of the week. The goal here is to see what your daily routine is like so you know when you're free, when you're busy, and where you can fit in language learning. That way, if you're super busy on Mondays and five minutes is all you can do, then that's good enough. You won't feel bad about doing only five minutes. If you see that you spend 30 minutes on commuting, add language learning on top of that existing routine. 
if you take walks or go for a jog, play an audio lesson there. Or even if you're cooking at a certain time, play an audio lesson in the background. Remember, look for an existing routine that you already stick with, like commuting, and where you can multitask. Don't try to create new routines. For example, waking up at 7 a.m. to learn will set you up for failure. If you usually wake up at 8 a.m., waking up at 7 a.m. will be even harder. And then, actually trying to learn a language at 7 a.m. makes it even harder. This is where new learners start having trouble. You're trying to do two things at once, trying to learn the language and trying to stick to a new routine. One is hard enough. Trying to do two can overwhelm you. So piggyback off of your existing routines first so you can build momentum. And finally, there's language assessment. If you're an absolute beginner, you won't need much of an assessment. Just start with our absolute beginner recommended learning pathway. But if you have experience and want to assess yourself, there are two things you can do. First, if you're a Premium Plus user, then you're asked to do an assessment test when you join, but you can always request it again from your teacher. And second, if you're a Premium user, check our recommended pathways. We assign these pathways, level one to level five, based on your learning level, from absolute beginner to advanced. At the start of each pathway, there's a diagnostic test. You can take that to assess yourself. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about when routines grow stale, how to learn more language with a new routine. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. What are some surefire ways to stay motivated when you're learning a language? In this video, we're going to talk about 10 surefire ways to stay motivated and stay on track. All right, we asked our Premium and Premium Plus members for their tested techniques. You'll find out what worked for them. Number one, you must see your progress. In other words, you have to see it to believe it. There's nothing better than seeing your results firsthand. It's like seeing muscles in the mirror after working out. How do you do this with language? In order to see it, you have to start measuring it first. And you can do that with the dashboard on our website. With the dashboard, you can see how many lessons and how much of the language you've mastered so far. So review the progress you've made with the dashboard on the site. Number two, use the Daily Dose of Language app. With this, you get free daily mini lessons, but that's not all. This app keeps you on track because it actually sends you daily reminders. If you need that extra push or reminder, this app does it for you. And the Daily Dose lessons are quick and easy. They take just one minute of your time. Number three, learn with somebody better than you. A tutor, a friend, and you can even learn with your own teacher with a Premium Plus subscription. Simply having someone better than you by your side is enough to help you improve and motivate you. It's like having a coach. Number four, set a small, measurable goal. For example, finish 10 lessons in one week, or learn 20 words in a week. Most people give up because they have a vague goal, like I wanna be fluent, that they don't know how to reach. But if you aim small and make it measurable, you'll have a much better chance of reaching it. Your goal is to learn 20 words, and you know 17 already. Because you know how close you are, you're more motivated to close the gap and reach your goal. Number five, watch movies and shows in your target language. First of all, we recommend this because it's fun. But more importantly, when you understand what you hear, it's a clear sign of progress and you'll feel good about it. Number six, listen to music in your target language. Music is enjoyable, and if you make it part of your routine, you're giving yourself a nice break in between lessons. But you're still immersing yourself in the language. So if you enjoy this routine, you're more likely to stay motivated. Number seven, do the lessons that you enjoy. Just like with music, if you enjoy our audio and video lessons, then stick with them. If you have any favorite lessons, remember you can always download them to your device and review them as much as you want. They're yours to keep. Number eight, understand that language learning is a marathon. Learning a new language is not a sprint. Most people think they can study for hours and suddenly get better. But when they realize that it takes time, this can hurt their motivation. 
So understand that it's a marathon. Remember that it's better to study for a few minutes every day than pulling a five hour cram session that will burn you out. Number nine, keep the big goal in mind. Imagine yourself being fluent. Small, measurable goals are definitely important, but when you just don't feel like learning, which is completely natural, by the way, remember the big goal. Having the big picture in mind will remind you of what's important and put you back on track. Number 10, invest in the language. Make a commitment. Whether you buy a book or a subscription, enroll in a class, or join a study group, by investing and making a commitment, you're much more likely to go through with it. You've paid for it, so you value it more. You want to make sure you get your money's worth. Plus, other people expect you to show up. This can be extremely helpful when working towards your language goals. And that's it. There are so many ways to keep yourself motivated. Do you have a favorite way? Leave us a comment and let us know. So to make sure you stay motivated in your studies, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak and understand more of your target language? You'll need to know more words and phrases to really make new conversations and ultimately connections. In this video, you'll discover six ways to master new words and phrases fast. Number one, use our free vocabulary lists. Here's what makes this study tool so powerful. This is your free library of vocab and phrase lessons. You can learn words and phrases for current events like Halloween or New Year's. There are also many useful topics like the top 10 ways to say hello, conversational phrases, and more. In other words, you learn phrases that you wouldn't normally find in textbooks. And if you want to learn extra fast, you can use the slideshow tool. Just tap on or click on View Slideshow, then sit back and review the words and phrases. Find the vocabulary lists in the vocabulary drop-down menu on the site. And yes, these vocab lists are free for all users. Number two, take the audio and video lessons. One of the best ways to learn new words is through conversations. You get to hear how the words are used. So in every lesson dialogue, you'll come across some words you don't know. But don't worry, because our teachers translate everything. So when you hear the conversation again at the end of the lesson, you'll know them all. Number three, learn with our 2,000 most common words list. Here's a question for you. How many words do you think you need for conversational fluency? 3,000? 5,000? Actually, language experts say you need only about 1,500 to reach conversational fluency. And with this study tool, the 2,000 most common words list, you get the words you need for conversational fluency right up front. That's what makes this study tool so powerful. It's all here for you. And they're broken down into simple categories, such as adjectives, nouns, verbs, food, drinks, numbers, and months. Now, 2000 is quite a lot to learn. Do you have to learn it all? Well, you don't have to learn it all at once. You can go category by category. You can also start with the top 100 words, then move on to the top 200, 300, and so on, until you get to 2000. So if you're an absolute beginner, you can start with the top 100 words. Once you've mastered those, you can move on to the next category. You can also use other study tools to learn these words faster, right? Such as number four, study with spaced repetition flashcards. Now, we're not talking about paper flashcards. We're talking about the smart flashcards that you can find in our premium study tools. Picture this. Think of these as a teacher inside of your computer who quizzes you and sorts the words for you. So words that you struggle with, you'll be quizzed on more and more, and words that you know, you'll see less and less. So they display the words as needed, so you never forget them. In every session, they'll refresh your memory on the words you learned last time and introduce new ones. That's exactly how our smart flashcards work. And because you get drilled on the words you struggle with, you have no choice but to master them and improve. You have no choice but to succeed. You can also study the words from your lessons and vocab lists with the very same flashcard tool. Number five, create printable word lists with the word bank. The word bank is a study tool that lets you save words and phrases from lessons and vocab lists. Think of it as your extended brain. If you come across a new word that you want to review later, you can save it to the word bank. But the word bank also lets you print out your word lists. 
So click on the printer friendly option inside WordBank and print out your collection of words. You can use that sheet for writing practice. Number six, use the words. After you learn a new word, using it right away is crucial to remembering it. So when you're done with a lesson or a vocab list, leave a comment. Make up a sample sentence and post it in the comment section. Write it down in a notebook or shadow it, meaning listen to the audio pronunciation and say it out loud. You should do this because it's the actual practice that gets you to remember it. So say it, write it, listen to it again. Doing this will help lock the words into your memory. So if you want to take advantage of any of these tools for yourself, just check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Are you studying a language but starting to lose motivation? In this video, we're going to talk about the halfway point and how to keep going with language learning. After six months to a year of studying a language, you might be feeling like you're losing a little bit of steam. Maybe you started out strong and now you're feeling a bit low. Maybe you aren't seeing the results you wanted or you think your efforts aren't paying off. But the reason for that might not have anything to do with your studies. It might be more an issue about your reviewing and your goal setting. One, why you should review your past language goals. When you set goals, do you ever go back to review your progress? It can be a reminder of how far you've come and help you keep your motivation up. Let's say you started learning a language and you've been at it for a few months. In month one, you're excited and motivated. In month two, you're still going at it, but maybe the motivation is not as strong and you wanna make sure that you don't fall off, unfortunately, as most people do. So you work hard to keep at it. By month three, you're kind of on autopilot and learning with whatever has been working for you. That sounds like a good place to be, cruising on autopilot. Well, it may seem like a good place to be, but the problem is by month four, five, or six, if you've been coasting along for too long and haven't had any significant improvements, you may start wondering if you're actually learning or if you'll ever master the language. You might start losing motivation, and worse, you might even quit. If you're learning by yourself, it's hard. And if you're not tracking your progress, by month four or five, you might realize that the textbook you've been using isn't helping you increase your fluency. You might think you're going nowhere. So the reason to review is to check your progress. Maybe you can speak none of your target language in month one, but at the end of month three, you can speak three minutes. So that's some progress. And if you're at eight minutes now, for example, then you can definitely say that you've improved since the start. It's good for motivation, just knowing that you got a return on your time investment. So reviewing is good for progress and motivation. Also, it's natural to lose motivation with anything you're trying to learn or do. So it's something you need to keep up, something you need to keep in mind. What do you do when your motivation dips? You can stop, take some time to review and reflect. Is your motivation dipping? Are you studying less? Do you feel like you're not making progress? And if you say yes to these questions, then you can work on boosting your motivation to help you keep going. How do you boost your motivation? Well, do you remember anchor points? Anchor points are things that connect you or anchor you to your goal, such as a language class or a program. It could even be relatives or friends who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, or an upcoming trip to the target country. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you're watching a TV show in your target language, then it's natural for you to want to understand it better, and your desire to learn goes up. If you're taking language classes where a teacher expects homework from you, that's another connection to the language. So you do the homework, you attend classes, you learn more. Ultimately, if you want to boost your motivation and keep going, you should get more anchor points. But how do you do that? Let's jump into the second part. Two, how to review your progress and maintain motivation. How do you review your progress? First, you always set small, measurable goals and always track results. The study resource you're using can be used for your review as well. 
It's easy to get demotivated and think that you have learned nothing. But if you're using a textbook, for example, you can set a number of pages, and that can be a really good motivator, something to reach for. Making sure you're getting through and then testing yourself on material is a little harder if you're not actually using your textbook, though. So make sure that you actually stick to the plan you set for yourself. Again, the tool you're using is not so important, but just make sure whatever you use, you measure it and track your progress. Reviewing is as simple as looking at your past goals and results. You can also do it the old school way and look through your notebooks, see how much you've written out. In fact, we have something called the Dean's Date with our Premium Plus plan, where our Premium Plus users send in all of the work they've completed with their teacher. The writings, the recordings, the assignments, and you can see it all, everything that you've done. Then you can see your actual results of your three months of work. Everything you've accomplished is in one place. Do you ever run out of motivation? Of course you do occasionally, and it's natural for everyone's motivation to dip after some time. Then if you lose motivation, how do you keep going? Just as we talked about earlier, add more anchor points, more connections to the language, whether that means enrolling in in-person classes at a real language school, planning trips, or signing up for a test. Those anchor points help you stay motivated. Your main ones need to be things that will keep you interested in your target language or the people in your life connected to it. These are the things that will keep you motivated. But it's also important to remember, whether you're struggling or you're progressing rapidly, that you have to keep your learning adaptive. As humans, we are adaptive. We adapt to environments, and this is the same thing. Your language learning path has to adapt as you progress. If you're progressing faster, there's a way to adapt. If you're progressing slower, there's also a way to adapt. Three, how you can keep going past the halfway point. If you've been studying the language for a few months, it's normal to start losing steam. If you're not losing steam and you're progressing, then great job, and maybe you can share some of your tips with us because it's one of the hardest things ever to stay motivated long term. If you are starting to lose steam, remember that this happens with any goal. It can happen to anyone at any time, so you need to learn how to adapt to it. By being aware that these dips are natural and that they happen, you can expect them. So when one does come around, you'll know how to boost your motivation and know how to keep yourself going. Here's what you do when a dip does come around. One, review your learning progress. If you've been setting small, measurable goals every month, then this won't be a problem. The goal here is to see how far you've come, and this will help you maintain motivation. If you can see that you learned 50 words in January, 50 in February, 100 in March, and so on, then you have measurable progress. And this lets you know that you're improving, even when you don't feel like you are. Second, if you're a Premium Plus student, you can also participate in the Dean's Date and submit your work on the deadline. Be sure to ask your Premium Plus teacher about it. Third, if you're a Premium or Premium Plus user, you can also check your dashboard and see how many flashcards you've studied and how many lessons you've completed. We track your progress for you. But of course, it's best to set goals like learn 50 words or speak one minute of conversation because completing a lesson may not mean that you've mastered everything inside. So if you've not been setting goals and tracking them, now is the time to start. Otherwise, do you know how much of the language you can speak? Or how many words you've learned? If you don't know, then you'll feel like you're floating around and not learning anything. So be sure to set small, measurable monthly goals. Fourth, create more anchor points to boost your motivation. Anchor points are connections to the language that keep you anchored to the language and your goal. It could be friends or relatives who speak the language, TV shows in that language you like, an upcoming trip to the target country, language classes, or language programs. All of these things, in one way or another, keep you anchored to your language learning goal. So if you started learning a language because your relative speaks it, that motivation may not last forever. It may help you in month one or month two, but by month four, five, or six, your motivation might wear off. But you can decide to enroll in a class or start watching a TV show in that language. That will give you some new reasons to keep going to the language. In a way, you give yourself more reasons to learn. A lot of the time, the reasons why we start something are not often the reasons why we continue them. So don't be afraid to adjust your motivations as you go along. If you've reached a language milestone and are starting to feel a little less motivated, just take a look at these tips. Thorough review, setting anchor points, and reviewing your study methods will all help you keep going in your studies. For more strategies on how to keep studying, just check out our complete language learning program. 
sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.